Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel and I hope you've had the most fabulous first week of October. I have certainly been having a lot of fun. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I make my very own spookified version of the strawberry dress. A fun fact for you is that I'm actually very allergic to strawberries and I can't eat them. If you have been on Pinterest or Instagram in the last couple of years, you will have seen myriad versions of the strawberry dress. You don't know what I mean, I am talking about this dress here. Quite a few YouTubers have done their own DIY versions because it's a reasonably expensive designer dress. A few people have done Halloween versions or Halloween inspired versions and I just thought that is such a good idea because the dress itself is a really lovely design and although I do really like pink, it's a little bit too saccharine sweet for me and I really wanted to make myself something to wear for my All Hallows High Tea which is happening this Friday. What could be better than a dress made from gossamer shimmering cobwebs? So I'm going to take you through the process of how I made my un-strawberry dress just like the undead and take you through how I adapted the pattern and then all the steps to actually sewing my dress and a little reveal at the end. So I really hope this inspires you and you enjoy it. I certainly had a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to wearing my dress and having a wonderful time cackling with all my girlfriends. I knew I wanted to make my own strawberry dress in black and I wanted to find some kind of spooky, pretty lace and I was so pleased when I found this cobweb, slightly shimmery lace in Jacob's Haberdashery. It's going to make the perfect un strawberry dress. To line the dress I'm going to repurpose this wedding dress sample that I made a long long time ago for a photo shoot. It's got lots of tulle and a really good lining in it, so I'll be taking that apart. I'm just checking that I like the effect of the cream behind the cobweb lace, and I think it looks really lovely, so I'm going to go ahead and dismantle the wedding dress and cut out my dress. I'm going to be using the McCall's M7974 because general shape of this is very very similar to the actual strawberry dress so I'll be using the bodice pattern and adapting it and then just making a gathered skirt to create the skirt section. As I don't want a front opening on my un strawberry dress I'm simply going to fold out the button placket on the waistband panel and cut my fabric out on the fold to make a whole piece. I'll be using the rest of the pattern exactly as it is and all I'll need to do is gather the bust panel just slightly more so that it fits on the slightly smaller waistband panel. Loki's being very very helpful here, excuse me. I've pinned the lace onto some lining left over from a wedding dress. This normally is cut on the fold but I'm putting a zip in. I could faff around and change the back but I really don't have time and I think it will look good anyway. So I'm going to cut all of that out and I'm going to back the cobweb lace with this cream viscose lining. I have pinned the 
cobweb lace to the cream lining. This lace I got from Jacob's Haberdashery, it's got this sparkle on it. And I really love backing lace with a, a sort of a contrast colour, which makes the cobwebby show up a lot. But also, if you back um, an unstable fabric with a relatively stable, this is not the most stable lining actually, but if you if you back it with something more stable, it just um, it just makes the sewing process easier. So I'm gonna just sew around the edges now and do the gathering stitches where it's needed. Here's the bodice so far. I've sewn the front and backs together and I've got to sew on some ribbon. The original dress actually splits down much further, so we have it here. So it splits all the way down and then is secured in place by a ribbon, which is not a design that is particularly suitable for me or I would feel comfortable and that's the brilliant thing about sewing it allows you to interpret things that you like or admire in a design and then you make it fit for you so you literally make it fit in terms of it fits your body but also the design suits you as a person and your needs and requirements so Yep, so that was a no-no for me. So I think what I'm going to do, I have this narrow satin ribbon. I actually wanted velvet, but they didn't have it. I think I'm just gonna top stitch it on to about here and then leave a bit so that it can be tied in a bow. And I'll do the same there. And I'm gonna do the same across here. And I should definitely have done that before I sewed those side seams. I've pinned on the ribbon and I've left it unpinned and open at the front so that I can tie those into a bow. And I think that gives the feel of the ribbon feature on the strawberry dress without being too revealing although as I mentioned I should have put this in before I sewed this seam and I'm doing this before I put the skirt on because it just becomes too fiddly too bulky I try to do as many things completely flat as I can which is how I was taught to sew for ready to wear rather than home sewing. Loki is very much enjoying having a little snooze on the skirt panels that I've cut out for the unstrawberry dress. I'm going to have to move him because now is the time to start sewing them, but I really don't want to as he's been so poorly and seems to be quite happy here. Here's the bodice so far with the ribbons tied on. This is, this Mildred is much too small. I'm most definitely not a 10. Uh, I would have liked the sleeves to be much puffier, but anyway, never mind. So I've got to work out what the measurement is all the way around here, double it to create the ruffle that goes on both of those so I'm just using this fabric I'm going to create a, a self ruffle as it would be called and I've sewn the skirt panels together and I'm going to gather those and put those on and then I've got to look at the the lining and how I'm going to put that in I've gathered up a double layer of the cobweb lace to do the ruffles around the neckline. All I did was cut out an eight centimetre rectangle 
and just by the width of the fabric and I folded it over and ran a line of gathering stitches all the way along one for each side so I'm going to pin those on sew those on it's only about four o'clock but I am losing the light and I have got this far obviously I'm going to have something under here um, all the ruffles are sewn on the hem so I'm going to get the underskirt net floofy stuff in I thought I had a zip but I don't so that I will have to get tomorrow morning now so I'm just going to get this bit finished and we shall see I'm very nearly finished now I've got to elasticate the cuffs of the sleeves I'm really pleased with the contrast of the cream under the black lace and the ruffles are looking good. I'm going to bias bind that neckline just to finish it. I would normally do a full lining. The skirt looks great with the repurposed wedding dress under it and I can't wait to wear my unstrawberry dress. you've enjoyed this video about how I've made my very own version of an un-strawberry dress. If you haven't already subscribed feel free to click the subscribe and share my sewing journey. I really love spending time with you and really appreciate you taking the time to spend some time with me in my little cottage by the sea. Wherever you are in the world I hope you are staying safe and well and as always, huge thank you and love for all your kind comments and support. It really means the world to me. I've got lots more spooky fun to come your way. And I hope that you're having an amazing October wherever you are. And I will see you next Thursday for some more Halloween fun. Bye my lovelies.